Okay, so in the last video, we got to the point where you could move a character using the echo physics body. You could climb this sloped shape. So we made a polygonal collision and now the character can climb up the sloped shape and that was really easy to do in echo. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to push this red rectangle over here so it falls down into this space and also to stand across this trigger and make this rectangle fall down. First thing we're going to do is give the pushable box a physics body. Then we're going to make it so that the player will listen to that pushable box. And we also want the pushable box to listen to the sloped platform that we've created. In terms of orders to put the listener objects, as in the player could have gone here and the floor boundary could have gone here, I have a rule of thumb to say whatever's moving that will go on the left and whatever's interacting with the thing that's moving, that will go on the right. But they can go wherever you want. Okay, with this done, the player should be able to push the box and the box will essentially fall down into that hole and just keep going down. As you can see, the player can push the box and the box falls down. But that went down quite quickly. I want there to be a tiny bit of resistance to that box when it's being pushed. We can achieve that by adding a drag length to the box. I'm going to give it a value of 600, but I highly recommend you experiment, try different values and see what works well for your game. Now let's add some physics to our floor boundary so the box doesn't fall through the level. What I'm going to do is copy this floor boundary here and just rename everything to floor boundary 2. And because I've already done the workings out in Figma, I know what position that boundary should be in. With that done, let's add our second floor boundary as a listener to this pushable object. Now the box should stop at this part of the level and not move further down. Next, we're going to add some physics to this box up here and only trigger the physics when the player goes over this object. Let's add some physics to our floating box. And then we're going to turn the physics off. To do this, we get the physics body we've just added and turn the active flag off. We've done it this way so that it's easy to toggle the physics on and off. Now let's add a physics body to our floating box trigger. The reason for doing this is so that we can control what happens when the player's physics body overlaps with this floating box trigger. Let's write the code for what that looks like now. We're going to add a listener for the player and the floating box trigger, but we're also going to make use of the second argument of this listener function, which is options. First, we'll set the separate flag to false. What this does is turns off the collision between the player and the floating box trigger. Now let's control what happens when the player and floating box overlap. As you can see, we're making use of the enter flag, which triggers a function when the player's physics body interacts with the floating box trigger physics body. In this case, what will happen is it will run this function that turns on the physics body for the floating box. Now this function that runs on enter takes in three parameters. As you can see up here, it takes two echo bodies and one array of collision data. Even though we're not using any of these arguments in our function, echo expects them to be there. So what I tend to do is to put underscores where the arguments would be. One last thing to do is to add a mass of zero to the floating box trigger. This way, it won't need to listen to the overall gravity that's on the level. With that in place, when the player overlaps the trigger, the floating box should fall down. Now we need to make sure the floating box doesn't fall through the level 
when its physics body is active. All we have to do is add a listener for our floating box and the floor boundary too. And that should fix the problem. Let's add some elasticity to our floating box and some acceleration. Unfortunately, acceleration isn't one of the properties that can be added in this add body options section. So we have to add it separately by getting the physics object. If you want to see a full list of the options that can be added in the add body function, you can press option click in VS Code on the add body function and then press options click on the body options type def. And you can scroll down here to see a full list of options. Acceleration takes a vector two, one value for acceleration along the x-axis, the second for the y. We have a few issues. The first thing is that the player falls through the level. The second thing is that the boxes are so high that the player is hitting them. So let's change the size of the boxes so that the player can walk over both of them. First, we add a listener for the player and the second boundary. Now let's change the width and height of our pushable box. And before we forget, let's add a listener for our player and our floating box. Let's finally change the height of our floating box. And now, if we trigger the floating box and push the pushable box, the player should be able to walk across to the other side of the level. Now, if I continue walking with the player, because there's no collision on this box over here, the player will fall through the level. Now we could focus on doing that in the next video, but instead we're going to discuss something else, but something you definitely need to know if you're planning to use Echo in your next Hacks Flixel game. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video useful.